So we're ready to start applying some actual geometry to our pattern-based environment here. So if you recall from some of the discussion from our previous module, we talked a little bit about this image here. And this will show us basically what we're going to be modeling here. So we've got a few elements. We want to get a basic frame in place that will hold our panel in place, the actual panel itself, as well as some substructure, this webbing system, and as well as this main structure here, this tube steel. So we'll start out by placing a few points. And you can tell from this image we have several reference points in place with exposed or visible uh, work planes. So I'm going to jump back to Revit really quick and let's get the ball rolling. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and set a work plane. So I'm going to go up here to my work plane panel and we'll click on set and we'll pick our first work plane. Now we'll go from one to four here and kind of work that way. So and then we can add more points a little bit later. So I'm going to go ahead and set this flat or horizontal plane here as my work plane. So now I can just simply grab a reference point and then place it kind of far out in the space here and then we'll play around with some offsets and some positioning to get it exactly where we want it. So I'll come up here to my draw panel. I'll go to my point here. I'll select your point. Make sure it's reference point. And I'm going to place it somewhere around this area right about there. So when you get your first point placed, let's go ahead and expose the reference uh, plane. So that way it'll make, uh, it'll make it a lot easier for us to align and snap and lock things into place. So highlight your point we just placed. And in our properties window, we're just going to come scroll down here. And underneath this graphics area, it's going to say show reference. And I can move this out a little further so you can see it. But it's actually show reference planes. And we're going to switch that from never simply by clicking in there and we're going to set it to always and watch what happens. So not only is my grab gizmo here exposed but I also have all my work planes. So another thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and select that point we just placed and set it at a rough close approximate estimation or approximate placement a little bit lower than where it's placed right now. So right now by default it's set on the same area as the grid. So I'm going to go ahead and come back to our properties window once again, and we're going to adjust the offset. So I'm going to scroll down here and take a look at this. There's an offset here. So I'm going to go ahead and do offset. So I'm going to highlight this, and this will determine how much this uh, point is offset from the work plane we have in place. So right now it's zero, so that means it's exactly on that work, place, on that work plane. If I add a negative number, it'll move down. If I add a positive number, it'll move above point number one. So I want this to be a little bit below. This will be our tube steel. So I'm going to apply a oh, rough negative number here. So I'm going to say negative, we'll say 6 inches for now. So I'm going to say apply. And you'll notice it jumped down here. And we can actually scroll over here. I'll look at it from the left. And you can see this actually dropped down 6 inches. So that will allow us to actually start doing some aligning. So the key here is place your point, expose the reference planes, Go ahead and set up an offset, and now we're going to do some quick alignment. So I'm going to go ahead and use this, the point, the reference planes on point number one, as my source for my alignment. We're going to use the align tool to make sure this is aligned directly underneath this. So underneath our modify panel, I'm going to go ahead and click on align. And we're going to start off by referencing two of the work planes in number one. So we're going to go with this one. We'll select this work plane. And we're going to select the matching work plane in the same orientation on the point we just set. So we'll say, I want to, I want this, or I want my other point to align with that first one. So we'll select the second one, and boom, it aligns up nicely. And make sure you lock this in place. If you do not lock after an alignment, what happens is you'll try to load this into your project, and you'll have some floating geometry that looks detached at some areas, and it just turns out to be a big mess. So right after you align, make sure you lock. So we're going to do the same thing again, selecting first the element that I want to stay in place, and the second selection, again, will be the element that's going to move. So we're going to use this plane this time. So we'll select this one, and then we'll select the coinciding plane here. And again, making sure we lock so we don't have any floating geometry. So I'm going to go over here to this left view so you can see what we did here. See? It lined up perfectly in that direction. And I'm going to orbit around here so you can see what's going on in front and you can see it align nicely and we happen to snap it in place. 
So the next thing we need to do is we need to go on ahead and set up a parameter. So you remember when we placed this guy, we were able to basically uh, determine an offset. Well, this value, if you look at this value that's inside this space, look just to the right of that, you'll see this area. We can actually associate a family parameter to this. But first, we need to actually set up that parameter. So go to the top here in our Properties panel, and we're going to go on uh, Family Types. And when we do so, this will actually allow us to add parameters. So we're going to assign an offset parameter um, that we're going to make equal to the offset that's inside the actual properties of that point. That way we have some flexibility and some things we can control a little bit and some constraints in place so things don't go floating around. So we'll go ahead and add. So I'm going to, under, to the right of this window, underneath parameters, let's do a left click on add. I'm going to assign a name to this. So we can say, uh, we can call it pretty much whatever you want. But we'll just to make it make sense, I'll call this offset. And I'm going to keep it a type and I'm going to say OK. So now what we can do is we can actually specify what that distance is here. So I'm going to say one foot six inches. I'm going to say apply, OK. And now we've set a parameter. So now all we need to do is take that object, or in our case, this point we created, apply that parameter so it can now be constrained. So I'm going to select that point, come to our properties window, where offset is. I'm going to go ahead and associate a family parameter to this. So I want, basically I want this offset that comes with our uh, properties window here to be equal to the parameter that we just created here. So I'm going to say OK. And you see what happened there. It automatically jumped to the top because we didn't specify a negative value. Negative would go down, positive goes up. That's not a problem at all. We can easily go back there. And I'm going to go back to my parameters here. And I'm going to apply a negative value. And watch what happens now. So we go negative 1 foot 6 inches, apply, and OK. And now we're exactly where we need to be. So that's how you go about adding points and making sure they're aligned and locked in place uh, and all basically based around what's going on with our points. So I'm going to go ahead and take the time to uh, apply the rest of the points here, the other three. I highly recommend you try the same. But when we come back in the next clip, I'll have those points already in place so we're not doing too much repetition. Um, so if you don't want to add those points yourself, you can just hop on to the next clip and you can see what the next step is. But I always believe practice can help you get better and practice makes perfect. So applying these three extra points using the method we did here is a good way for, to practice for yourself.